denied people care, denied people coverage, dropped from, them from insurance when they got sick. We have one person with a story here with us today, Stacy Ritter from Mannheim, Pennsylvania, who, who has a long story of abuses by health insurance companies. She's just going to tell us a little bit about how Cigna denied her children care. from a famous writer he said if they can't get you asking the wrong question if they can get you asking the wrong questions then they don't have to worry about the answers well they've managed to get us all asking the wrong questions and they've managed to not answer the right questions so we're here tonight to ask them the right questions and force them to give us answers answers as to why I have to live in fear of denials for care for my children. I've been living in fear since the day my identical twin girls were diagnosed with cancer. Fear that they would lose their battle to the disease. Fear of relapse, which happens quite often. And fear of more denials from my insurance company. I'm grateful for living in a country where I have access to the world's best doctors. Doctors that saved my children's lives to the best of their ability. Unfortunately, due to the lack of funding and research for childhood cancers, the least funded of all cancers, by the way, the treatments available to them have changed little in the past 30 years. The treatments that save their lives also leave them with chronic health conditions. My girls suffer from a number of the late-term effects caused by chemo and total body radiation. They both suffer from damage to the pituitary and the hypothalamus glands, which now require them to take painful daily shots of growth hormone. A treatment prescribed by our renowned pediatric endocrinologist, who was the founding director of the Diagnostic and Research Growth Center here in Philadelphia at CHOP in 1983. He had 30 plus years experience of research focused on the endocrine function of children who survive cancer with special interest in growth and sexual development disorders as a result of cancer treatment. He served as chief of the hospital's division of endocrinology and is a widely published and the editor of the pediatric endocrinology textbook pediatric endocrinology requisites and pediatrics unfortunately we lost our beloved dr. Mojang to pediatric cancer in February 2008 his legacy continues through the doctors who were fortunate enough to learn under the guidance of this well-respected man upon beginning treatment, we had to go through a series of unnecessary tests that were required by the insurance companies to establish proof of medical necessity. One such test was an MRI forcing unnecessary radiation exposure to my daughters in attempts to make sure that it was a treatment worthy of insurance coverage. Edna was our provider at the time. After we met all the test requirements, they agreed to cover the medication. A few months later, my husband's I'm sorry, a few months after we started medication, my husband's employer switched from Cigna. Ironically, our plan was activated on April Fool's Day, 2008. Our doctor immediately enrolled us in a program through the manufacturer that would provide us the drug while we were waited for the insurance process change to take place knowing that Cigna would deny the coverage, and they did. I spent three months on the phone, three months of being lied to, about missing information, stories about papers that were submitted to the wrong departments, messages that were never received, confusing me as to which state's laws my case fell under for appeals because my husband's um, home office is based in Texas, and we live here in Pennsylvania. They even went as far as rescinding an approval of the medication for my one daughter that they did in a peer-to-peer -peer, um, review with our doctor. And when the doctor's office called them back, 
to go forth and get the the uh, coverage of the medication, they claim no. We we should have never approved that. She's denied. They even claim they didn't have any information that my other daughter even existed. They seem to have the information when they sent her denial the month earlier. If my doctor, who wrote the textbook on the subject, and even another insurance company, Aetna, felt my children needed this medication, how can Cigna continue to this day to deny it? Fortunately, my girls are able to continue receiving this vital medication from the manufacturer, Eli Lilly. I'm sick and tired of wondering what I'm going to do when the next medication is denied. And with a chronic illness, there will be a next medication. There's an estimated 300,000 childhood cancer survivors in the United States today. My daughters being two of them. An estimated 12,500 will be diagnosed every year. Under the current laws, they are left with the stigma of a pre-existing condition. Just another way for the insurance companies to turn their backs on our children. Please help me in honor of all of these strong children and support change. I don't want my kids to grow up being told they're not worthy of health insurance. It costs too much money. It wasn't in the budget. Thank you.